I am tired of myself. When you say I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's the facilitator of change. That's when you're ready to say these words, no more excuses. No more excuses. I've never met a person who was not successful that didn't have a great amount of self-discipline within their life. Uh, self-discipline and being able to perform and being able to keep your life on schedule and being able to keep commitments and promises and meet deadlines is essential to success. Uh, none of us, none of us can afford to have a life that is controlled by someone else or a life that is basically controlled by our emotions. I learned many years ago that there are two kinds of people. There's the type of person who says, I, I'm going to wait till I feel like it before I do it. And then there's a person who says, I've got to do it so that I feel like it. One will never get anything done because they're still waiting to feel the moment to move. And the other person says, no, I need to move. And then I will begin to feel the moment. Sonia, self-discipline is essential in your life and in my life if we're going to get things done. So I have a challenge for every one of you this weekend. The challenge is simple. As you go through your weekend, and sometimes it's kind of a, hopefully an easier time of your week, ask yourself, am I practicing self-discipline in my life? Am I doing the things that I should do because I need to do them, or am I kind of waiting to feel the moment? If you don't know this quote, live by it. One can have no smaller or greater mastery than mastery over oneself. That's Da Vinci. Da Vinci did amazing things with his life. I wanted to do equally amazing things with mine. And if that's the game that we're playing, if I can construct my belief system, if I can choose at any moment to believe something that's more empowering than I was believing the moment before, and that that will actually find its way into my actions, allow me to do things that I couldn't do the moment before, then it's like that moment in the Matrix where Neo realizes he knows Kung Fu. And that's like, as funny as that is, that's how I think about life. To me, the very fundamental purpose of life is to find out how many skills I can acquire that have utility and then put that utility to the test in service of something greater than myself. Stop comparing yourself to others. So the first thing you do is stop focusing on other people. Instead, focus on being the best version of you that you can. Then you'll recognize that you deserve to sit at the big table with everybody else after you become the best that you can be. Now, once you've accepted that you have as much right to success and much right to succeed as anybody else, the next step is learning how to talk the talk. You have to get fluent in the language of success so you speak it with ease. Surround yourself with people who've accomplished their dreams and immerse yourself in the culture of achievement. The ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them as they cross over. He said, but imagine if you will being on your deathbed and standing around your bed the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life and that you, for whatever reason, you never went after that dream. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those talents. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now, we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what talents, what books, what music, what leadership, what voice will die with you? Miles Monroe, great orator and speaker, said the wealthiest place on the planet is not in the Far East where there's oil in the ground. It's not in South Africa where there are diamond mines. He said the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. Because there you'll find greatness that we've never seen. There you'll find talent and genius and potential never actualized. 
Perhaps that's why Henry David Thoreau wrote the words, Oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived. Maybe that's why some unknown writer wrote the words, What if you live your whole life only to discover that it was wrong? That it was wrong. That you were chosen to do something else. And you didn't do it. Repeat after me, please. Live full. Live full. Die, empty. Die empty. I want you to take some notes and some things, and I want you to think about your goals and dreams in the three categories that I mentioned personal, professional, and your social contribution. How many of you are serious about your goals and dreams? Raise your hands, please. Thank you very much. How many of you don't want to take your dreams to your grave with you? Raise your hands, please. Very good. Shake someone's hand on your right and left. Look them in the eyes and say, get out of your head and step into your greatness. Do that right now, please. Say, get out of your head and step into your greatness. I want you to write this down. Let us say together, as you think about your goals and dreams, let us say together, it's possible together, please. Yes, write that down. See, ladies and gentlemen, as an entrepreneur, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. It's my 21st year. I could have been speaking and training for 34 years, but for 14 years, I was living in my head. For 14 years, I stopped myself. For 14 years, I used to go see Zig Ziglar that I considered the number one motivational speaker on the planet. Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins, they're the best on the planet. Bob Proctor, they're the best on the planet. Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, T. Hav Eckert. I would go and see them and then I would leave and my conversation with myself was, my heart would say, I can do that. And then my mind would ask, how? How would you do that, Les Brown? See, when I was in the fifth grade, I was identified as EMR, labeled educable, mentally retarded. Put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade. I failed again when I was in the eighth grade. I have no college training. And a man changed my life, and I'll never forget his name, Mr. Leroy Washington. He's in his 80s now, and, and he's blind from glaucoma, but he, he gave me a different vision of myself. I was in his class waiting on another student. He came in and said, young man, go to board and work this problem out for me. I said, oh, sir, I can't do that. He said, why not? I said, I'm, I'm not one of your students. He said, look at me. Yes, sir. Go to the board and work the problem out anyhow. I said, sir, I, I can't do that. He said, why? I said, sir, because I'm educable, mentally retarded, sir. I'm in special education. And the students started laughing. They said, that's Leslie. That's not Wesley. He's DT. Wesley is the smart twin. He said, what does DT stand for? I said, um, I'm the dumb twin, sir. And as the students laughed at me, he came from behind his desk. He looked at me and he said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. On one hand, I was humiliated, but on the other hand, I was liberated because he looked at me with the eyes of Gerda who said, look at a man the way that he is, he only becomes worse. But look at him as if he were what he could be, then he becomes what he should be. And so we developed a relationship. And one of the things that I can just tell you as you think about your goals and dreams, all of us can say in a spirit of integrity that it's possible. That if anybody at any point in time lived their dream, then it's possible that I could live mine. And what I did was, I made a mistake. I looked at my goals and dreams and my mind said, how will you do that? I went from my heart to my mind. And I stayed up there for 14 years. 14 years. I can't bring those 14 years back. Those years are gone. And I've made a mission in my life to help people to stop putting it off and procrastinating. How many ever thought about something you wanted to do and you procrastinated, you talked yourself out of it? Raise your hand, please. There's a proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. And so, as you look at your goals and dreams, every day we must convince ourselves, we must sell ourselves on that it's possible, every seminar, every workshop, every book that I've ever read, every speaker that I've ever heard, it interrupted what I was believing about myself. Everything that you do, everything matters. 
As you go through each day, I know now as I look back at age 63, looking at my life, everything matters. T. Harv is right. How you do anything is how you do everything. And I realized that the choices I was making was based upon how I saw myself. Let us say together, it's necessary. Write that down. It's necessary as you look at your goals and your dreams, it's necessary that you have a, a strategy and a game plan to change the story that you believe about yourself. And that's an ongoing process. I've discovered, and many people have, that what we do, what we accomplish, what we produce is a result of the story we believe about ourselves. My favorite book says, Be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so as I began to work on myself, I realized that I'm getting out of one story and stepping into another story. As I become aware of some things, there's still some things I'm not aware of. So I still, I'm still growing, I'm still developing. I'm like the lady who said, Lord, I ain't what I want to be, ain't what I'm going to be, but thank God I showed what I was. But I realized that, that you have to work on yourself on a regular basis, and write this down, for mental mindset for mental mindset and stamina because things are going to happen to you I don't believe I believe that the reason that most people go to their graves with their talents and abilities and skills in them is because of the fact number one many are like me they didn't know that they didn't know and, and thought they knew I thought I knew myself and I really didn't know myself as well as I thought I've discovered that sometimes people can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself the other reason is I was afraid. I never worked for a major corporation. I wanted to speak for corporations. I was afraid I would, I would be exposed because I don't have a college education. I felt inferior because of the fact that I don't have a college education. I allowed that level of fear of failure to stop me. And because I never had any experience in it, I assume that I could not do it. I was paralyzing myself by believing and assuming the limited part of myself as opposed to believing that I had something special. You have something special. There's something you want to do. Because you don't know how to do it doesn't mean that you can't learn. I, I like something that I heard. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. Repeat after me, please. Lead and grow your wings on the way down. See, the people that will live their dreams, the 2% that will do that, these are, and write this down, become a risk taker. They're risk takers. They don't mind failing. They don't mind making mistakes. They're willing to take life on, take life in the collar. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? I like what Helen Keller said. She said, life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first.